It's interesting, when a lot of that lockdown was on and there was nowhere to go to, uh, I'd been watching cycling. A previous vicar of Narrabri introduced me to cycling, leading to my interest in watching the grand tours of France, Italy and Spain. And each of these three-week races passes through scenic regions where they have old castles, fortresses, grand palaces, shadows and memorials connected to past rulers. Now, having devoted vast resources to their defences, each of the regimes was eventually conquered. King David put his faith in the best defence. He trusted the Lord God to save him. Now, David describes himself as the servant of the Lord, the servant who has been rescued from, for, from formidable enemies from other nations and also from King Saul, who had pursued David for years, despite David having served King Saul faithfully. That David actually composed Psalm 18 himself is likely to be the truth, because judging by the words that he uses and the song of praise attributed to David in 2 Samuel chapter 22, after his enemies had been defeated, is almost the same as Psalm 18. Well, if you want to sing a joyful song and a song of thanks, why not put it in the hymn book? And so that's what David did. It came into the book of Psalms. So as we look at go to Psalm 18, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that we might see your faithful care for David as we look at this psalm, may our appreciation of your care, faithfulness and strength grow so that we can look forward to singing heartfelt praises to you and to Jesus whenever we get the chance. Amen. Right, so if you turn to Psalm 18, we've all found where psalms are, haven't we? It's near the middle of the Bible. Psalm 18 is a much longer one than the previous psalms that we've been studying in the last few weeks. Now, one of the reasons for that is that David had so much to thank God for. So Psalm 18, and I'll start at the introduction. For the choir director of the servant of the Lord, David, who spoke the words of the song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from the grasp of all his enemies and from the power of Saul. He said, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock where I seek refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I was saved from my enemies. The ropes of death were wrapped around me and the currents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. I called to the Lord in my distress and I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of the mountains trembled. They shook because he burned with anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and consuming fire came from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by it. He bent the heavens and came down, total darkness be beneath his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place. Dark storm clouds, his canopy around him. From the radiance of his presence, his clouds swept onward with hail and blazing coals. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High made his voice heard. He shot his arrows and scattered them. He hurled lightning bolts and routed them. The depths of the sea 
became visible. The foundations of the world were exposed. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He pulled me out of the deep water. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my support. He brought me out in a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. He repaid me according to the cleanness of my hands. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not turned from my God to wickedness. Indeed, I let all his ordinances guide me and have not disregarded his statutes. I was blameless toward him and kept myself from my iniquity. So the Lord repaid me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the faithful, you prove yourself faithful. With the blameless, you prove yourself blameless. With the pure, you prove yourself pure. But with the crooked, you prove yourself shrewd. For you rescue an oppressed people, but you humble those with haughty eyes. Lord, you light my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. With you I can attack a barricade, and with my God I can leap over a wall. God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is pure. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God beside the Lord? And who is a rock? Only our God. God, he clothes me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me securely in the heights. He trains my hands for war. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You who have given me the shield of your salvation, your right hand upholds me and your humility exalts me. You make a spacious place beneath me for my steps and my ankles do not give way. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I do not turn back until they are wiped out. I crush them and they cannot get up. They fall beneath my feet. You have clothed me with strength for battle. You subdue my adversaries beneath me. You have made my enemies retreat before me. I annihilate those who hate me. They cry for help, but there is no one to save them. They cry to the Lord, but he does not answer them. I pulverise them like dust before the wind. I trample them like mud in the streets. You have freed me from the feuds among the people. You have appointed me the head of nations. A people I had not known serve me. Foreigners submit to, the, to me, cringing. As soon as they hear, they obey me. Foreigners lose heart and come trembling from their fortifications. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. The God of my salvation is exalted. God, he grants me vengeance and subdues people under me. He frees me from my enemies. You exalt me above my adversaries. You rescue me from violent men. Therefore, I will give thanks to you among the nations, Lord. I will sing praises about your name. He gives great victories to his king. He shows loyalty to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. As David comes to look back on events in his life, he recognises the provider of his strength, the Lord, for whom David has a special love. Verse 2 summarises some of the features of the Lord's care for David especially when he was a fugitive from Saul in the southern wilderness areas of Israel. And that's described towards the end of 
the chapters in 1 Samuel and in one case there, which I'll just read to you, a short one in 1 Samuel 23, starting at verse 25. No need to have a look now. Saul went along one side of the mountain and David and his men went along the other side. Even though David was hurrying to get away from Saul, Saul and his men were closing in on David and his men to capture them. Then a messenger came to Saul saying, Come quickly because the Philistines have raided the land. So Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to engage the Philistines. It's amazing, isn't it? David was about to be caught and then God stepped in. The Philistines had arrived and they were going to, they were a bigger threat to Saul than David. So Saul stopped chasing David at that time. In Psalm 18, verse 3 describes David calling to the Lord who is worthy of praise. Notice that the Lord was worthy of praise even before he saved David from his enemies. In verses 4 and 5, and it's good if you can follow through the reading in your Bible, we hear pictorial language to describe David's situation from which he couldn't escape in his own strength. Verse 6 tells how David called to the Lord in his distress and the Lord heard him. The pictorial language that follows that describes the might of God's anger and judgment. Similar words were used in the book of Exodus to describe God's actions when God delivered the Israelites from Egypt and destroyed the pursuing Egyptian army after the Israelites had crossed the bed of the Red Sea. Now you find that in Exodus chapters 14 and 15 and that same sort of pictorial language again when God descended onto Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19 because God wanted to talk to the people who had, he had just brought out from Egypt. Now, you might remember in these stories that we've read before how the cloud came down on the mountain and the voice of God came out of the cloud. It was all very scary. The people weren't going to go up to meet with God. They sent Moses. In verses 16 to 19, David being rescued from a tight spot and being brought to a spacious place is reminiscent of Israel being rescued from Egypt. They were rescued first into the wilderness and 40 years later into the promised land. David was rescued when he was in that desert region and Saul was chasing him and his final spacious place on earth was the kingdom of Israel at the time that David ruled there. When we think about the rescue of God's servant who had been anointed by God and his ultimate promotion to being king in the promised land, we also remember another servant of the Lord, an Israelite, a descendant of David, anointed with the Holy Spirit, whom God had described as my son in whom I delight. Jesus is that servant. He was lifted up and we know that he was resurrected from the cords of his grave into a spacious place, even into heaven. In the reading from 2 Samuel 7, we read that God promised David that his descendant would build a house for God's name and that God will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. God said, I will be his father and he will be my son. David had been thinking in terms of building a temple in Jerusalem. And now he thinks, all right, well, my successor will build the temple there. But we see the perfect temple being built when Jesus comes 
and he builds his temple from the people who he saves. And we, if we are Christians, are members of his temple, the place where Jesus is. In verses 20 to 24, they are verses speaking of David's description of why he had been rewarded. It might seem to imply that David had been righteous by himself. In fact, righteousness had been graciously attributed to him by God because David had acted in faith when he had carried out the Lord's instructions. He had believed that the Lord would lead him and protect him. The righteousness of David was a gift from God, not a reward for David's work. The Lord lights up David's path and gives David the strength and ability to carry out superhuman tasks as he serves the Lord. When we go to verses 25 to 29, Paul is addressing God. He's describing his nature. Again, blameless and purity only exist because the Lord has graciously forgiven the blame and impurity of those who have put their faith and trust in God. We know that Jesus, God in human form, was the only blameless and pure man. In verses 30 to 34, there are more verses about God. And David tells us that God provides perfect advice and protection to his faithful servants. Only the Lord is God, there is no other. Only God provides the perfect foundation for a safe life. God provides all that David needs to carry out God's work safely. Now, people may try to tell you that there are other equally powerful gods. Ask those friends if their gods are still alive. Jesus defeated death, the foe that no one else has been able to overcome. Jesus was seen alive by hundreds of believers after his resurrection and reliable eyewitnesses saw the living Jesus rise back up to heaven where he still lives. So we've got eyewitness that Jesus rose from the dead. There are no other religious leaders that can claim that. Jesus was the word of God in human form. He, propo- he provides the advice and protection that the Lord God provided to David When Jesus went back to heaven, God sent the Holy Spirit to pass on the advice and protection 24-7 all over the world in place of Jesus. That same Holy Spirit lives in the heart of each believer. He will teach them all things and remind believers of everything that Jesus had told his disciples. What a wonderful gift from God. If only believers would listen. Verses 34 to 45 are almost entirely addressed to God, attributing all of David's victories, his strength, the respect that he won from enemies who recognise that they are inferior to God. All of this comes only from God's support of David. David's position as the earthly ruler of nations came only from God. In the next few verses, they're applied to the Lord that David served. They also describe the relationship between believers and the Lord Jesus, who came to save everyone who puts their faith in the work that Jesus did on the cross. Jesus took upon himself all the punishment that believers should have suffered from th- for themselves. It's the sacrifice of Jesus that allows God to justly forgive all people who put their trust in God's plan. That same forgiveness is given to all people who believe, like David, even in Old Testament times, and other people who trusted God back in the Old Testament times. And that same forgiveness is given right through to the present day and will be given 
to sinners in the future who turn to God, to turn to Jesus as their saviour. Now that one perfect sacrifice once made for all sins is recognised during the service of the Lord's Supper. The final verses form the bookend to the psalm as David sings praises about the Lord God among the nations, reminding them that the Lord gives great victories to his king and shows loyalty to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. When you are in a threatening situation, what do you do? David cried out to God to save him. As you read the story of David's life recorded in the books that are labelled 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel in your Bible, you'll see that God rescued David in a great variety of ways. And God will save you in a great variety of ways, many of which you would not have anticipated. Do you thank God for delivering you from the threatening situations as you go about serving Jesus? Do you sing praises to your family and neighbours? That is, praises of Jesus. Jesus said in John 3, 16 and 17, For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus made clear to the world that the offer of eternal life was not restricted to Jews, that's the circumcised, but has always been extended to non-Jewish believers, called Gentiles. As Paul wrote in our reading from Romans 15, starting at verse 7, when he said, Therefore accept one another, just as Christ also accepted you, to the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a servant of the circumcised on behalf of God's truth, to confirm the promises to the fathers, and so that Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, and I will sing praises to your name. Familiar verses, they're in Psalm 18. Again, it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will appear. The one who rises to rule the Gentiles. The Gentiles will hope in him. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Before we go, let me pray. And if you agree with my prayer, please join in the Amen at the end. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Psalm 18, your loving servant David praises you for who you are, for your caring nature in protecting him through many physical trials, saving him from enemies outside the land, as well as from Saul and other enemies within the nation of Israel. Nothing is beyond your reach. No one is more powerful than you. David knew that he was a mere man, but you gave him the strength, skills, endurance and abilities to carry out superhuman tasks for you. David trusted you to bring forth the perfect king from David's line, who will rule forever. We recognise that your only son, Jesus, came as the earthly descendant of David to fulfil your promise to David and to be the perfect saviour of all who put their trust in your plan to save all believers. We confess that we cannot please you, trusting in our own strength, but only through the free gift of forgiveness purchased by Jesus as he died on the cross. We know that your plan is perfect 
because Jesus was resurrected to eternal life and now lives forever and will reign for eternity. Like David, we want to praise you for your provision and protection, freely be given, freely given to all believers. We thank and praise you through your only Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen.